Response to the sinking of the Lusitania. Uh, there was a big marine base blown gas down by the American Navy, and they weren't having great success with the U-boats. So they decided, they decided to uh, develop seaplanes to fight the U-boats. And Whitty Island, this part of Whitty Island, was selected because it was a secure area for a base, and it was within flying distance of Fastnet Lighthouse, which was a, a focal point for convoys coming from America. So that's where the U-boats were attacking. So this is the slipway they built for pulling up and down the planes. Now, it was only about two years ago I came across a picture of it, guys. And what they're actually doing is putting the rope over their back and pulling these planes up. These planes, right in front of us here now, they dismantled everything, but right in front of us here would have been the site of the hangars. The hangars would have been well over 100 feet wide, as the planes were 96 foot wide and 45 foot long. And over there, there was a huge deep water jetty, a timber jetty, which they disassembled and took away after the war, and the same with the hangars. And there was barracks all the way along here. But they were timber barracks and they were dismantled and sold and auctioned. I think there's one of them actually above in College Road in Cork City still, where a family live. The only building left is this, this is where the ammunition was stored above here. That's the only building they had left and alongside that was a huge radio mast and water tanks. And the building, the ruin alongside of it in is part of an O'Sullivan Bear Castle that he had here on the island. Um, I think the, it was not fully intact but well intact until about 1920 when it stormed. Knock the most of it. This part of the island is called Kilmore, this name of this town land, and these two lakes are called the Kilmore Lakes. One of them is a saltwater lake, which is full of mullet today, you can see. The other one is a freshwater lake, and that's where the island get their drinking water out of. Feel like a pre, you know, pre-Christian place for it could have been for yeah. services, you know. Um, but anyway, you were saying it was Church of Ireland, and it, it moved. Church, yeah, it was Church of Ireland, and we didn't actually know that until lately. <coughs> but I was looking some, through some papers with a local historian, and he said this guy Winter, who was he was one of Cromwell's lieutenants, really. He was granted uh, the rights on the island. And then he went to Spain. There was money owed to him, this on the student, you know, to start out. But before he left, he knew he wouldn't be coming back here. He decreed that money be spent on the church here, and then that was the first clue that it was actually a church of Ireland graveyard. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Because he, but so then, I actually don't know, and I've been trying to find out when it changed, when Catholics were allowed to be buried here. But it's hard to find it out. And also, another thing is a lot of the Ireland families who have been here for hundreds of years, they were never buried here. Yeah. They think the only certain families were buried here. That white timber cross over there is the cross for the last person that was buried here in 1995. Oh, that's fairly recent. Like, it's fairly recent, yeah. yeah. But most of the families now have either gone off or moved on or married on to the mainland, so the graveyard is in effect closed now. Yeah. I mean, like, even like this ditch, this is, this is man made, huh? There's no question in my mind that well, this what, is man made. What, what I was told about that ditch was that in times of the famine, you know, <coughs> there was a big it was kind of a triple whammy here, there was the, the fishing failed, the famine came, then deers were coming in here. But around that time a lot of people were, dis were, were evicted and dispossessed. And they said this is where they found refuge to eat. There was a man, I knew a man in there who used to dig the graves here. 
Hey Toby, if you went down there a couple of feet in the earth, nothing but shells. This is one of three redoubts built in the island and they were built after the French invasion of 1796. So tell me about this stone then please Tim. This stone, I don't know what the origins of it are, how long it's been gone back, but it's certainly been gone back hundreds of years. Every person who dies in the island and has to be taken to the mainland to be buried or is brought in to be buried on the island, their coffin, their, the coffin has to be landed here. It has to rest on this stone before it can go up the road and down, or if it's coming down the road, going out before it can leave the island. And back in the 50s, the council widened the pier here, and there was murder. They were going to blow the stone out of the way, and they weren't allowed. So it's it's, it's still here. Um, it's kind of, I suppose, it's a very important tradition on the island. Yeah, this school was built in 1887. I, I went here myself. Um, when I started here, there was about 17 or 18 in the school, but when I finished, there was about seven. Um, the last pupil who actually went to school here used to pick up the teacher and collect her every morning. There was, there was one pupil and one teacher in the school. But in my father's time, there was over 60 people in the school. And I, know that I remember another man who told me there was 80, over 80 in the school and in the school there. And uh, they would all have been inside in this one room with not enough desks for them all, some of them had to sit on the floor. And there was another school about a quarter mile off the road, or less. And then there was head schools, of course, before the same as everywhere else, really. This building was the post office. It was the only post office we ever had. We only ever had one postmistress and she'd done the job for 58 years and it closed about 15 years ago but there's a post box on the side of the road here now so you can post your letters and letters are delivered around every day.